चिकवाल where i made it to the honor board of uh, the this prestigious institution then i got scholarship for msc chemistry from punjab university i did msc chemistry with specialization in physical chemistry uh, right after that i got scholarship from hcc indian scholarship for my mphil i pursued my mphil from kadam university islamabad i have published my three research papers uh, right after my mphil i remain member of editorial board for two research papers for two years Uh, I have also presented my research work at various national and international conferences. I remain best speaker, nominated as best speaker in uh, international conference on new generation energy technologies for two years, 2016 and 2018. As far as my professional career is concerned, I started my professional career by serving as a lecturer chemistry in higher education department for two years. Mm-hmm. Then I secured 13 position in provincial management services, Punjab. Since then, I am serving um, in the province of Punjab. I have served as section officer in local government and community development department. Currently, I am posted in home department in the police wing. And the, my job description in the in the section of police wing are the private security companies and the management of all the theaters operative in Punjab along with certain miscellaneous subjects. And we are four siblings. I am the eldest one. My younger sister is lecturer physics in higher education department. Then my brother is. Uh, Flight lieutenant in Pakistan Air Force, and the youngest one is doing MBBS. She is in third year. Thank you. So why you are changing? You are already serving in the PMS services. Yeah. Why you want to go to the federal government? Uh, for me, CSS, especially <coughs> CSS groups, have more uh, professional growth, more uh, chances of promotion. and they have more exposure both in the vertical and in the horizontal level they have more chances for service as compared to pms secondly pms is not as such recognized service because <coughs> this is so nascent as compared to css so that's why if i can excel after lecture in the pms i thought that i must give chance to myself to excel for better service both in terms of service delivery and so both you want to join the services of government of pakistan yes sir Okay, tell us about Pakistan. What do you know about Pakistan? Introduce Pakistan to all of us. Um, Pakistan is a land of beautiful people. It consists of four provinces: uh, Punjab, Sindh, uh, KPK, and Balochistan, along with the federal administrative tribal areas, which are no merged merged with the KPK province, along with a federating unit known as Gilgit Baltistan. Um, it has a capital that is Islamabad. The overall population of Pakistan is around twenty-two billion, and Pakistan twenty-two. Hundred billion, two hundred and twenty million crore. Two hundred and twenty million. Billion पे चली गई है. You are governed by a constitution. Um, yes, the nineteenth century constitution. Then we have a different uh, services <coughs> sectors in Pakistan. Um, as far as the services sector, we have three major institutions: the judiciary, the administrative structure, and then we have the constitution. In Pakistan, basically, there are two houses of parliament: the National Assembly and the Provincial Assemblies. Four provincial assemblies with allocated seats, and we have uh, the different. Uh, we have a four defense force that is not the provincial base; that is the uh, national Pakistan force. Then we have different services. We have national services like CSS. in term of administrative services then we have different provincial services known as pcs provincial uh, provincial civil services and in punjab it is provincial management services welcome to csps academy for css pms preparation css pms tehreeri imtihan ke tamam mazamin ki online aur on campus taiyari ke sath sath subject selection assignment checking class test mock exam इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनका किया जाएगा इसके अलावा एफ पी एस सी की तजवीज करदा बुक ऐसी बने मैरी नोट और सी एस पी पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन बुक्स मुहैया की जाएंगी रजिस्टर नाउ एफ जीरो थ्री वन सिक्स फाइव सेवन जीरो वन फाइव नाइन थ्री इन पार्लियामेंट यू सेट यू है 
What is the role of president in the parliament? President is actually the administrative head of a country. It is the governing head of the country, both in terms of administration and also in terms of, uh, because it is the head of defense, basically. Parliament, three component is there. National Assembly, Senate and the President. Your province of Punjab, the assemblies have been dissolved. Now there is a controversy, the, which has been, which has landed in the Supreme Court of Pakistan. What are the questions of determination before Supreme Court of Pakistan? Uh, first of all, the President uh, has ordered for the re-elections of uh, the dissolved assemblies of Punjab and KPK. The question was that for the re-election of assemblies, it is a prerogative of a governor to, to assign the date or to designate the date and time for the election. And in the constitution of Pakistan under article 48, the president can in certain, in certain circumstances can issue a date. Well, according to election act 2017, the article 57 election act says that President in consultation with the Election Commission of Pakistan can issue the date for the general election. Now the question that arose and the Supreme Court has taken the SOMO to action that is this the date given by President was legal or was it according to all the terms and conditions being satisfied before giving the date that is announced on the, in the mid of April that is 9th April. Was it after the consultation or the due process as written in the constitution, was it legal or not? And is the is there any precedent in this matter? Like uh, we have a Malvi Tamizuddin case in our history that is according to the same resolution of assembly, and then it was said it was also stated as a doctrine of necessity. Is the same scenario or it will be a different? So this is the thing that the Supreme Court of Pakistan has to take action according to these and, and to finalize this case. Arfa. If you are before the Supreme Court, as a respondent, what will be your argument? This is the argument which you will give, or you will the, follow the argument of the petitioners? I will stand by this stance to hear the case and to see the scenario of all the country and the governor's crisis that we are facing since last five months the public approach, the role of democracy in sustaining the country, political culture and economy, <clears throat> then I would, I would prefer to, to prefer to go for the legal sense, not for doctrine of necessity, to go for the thing that will be most suitable for our country in this scenario of economic and political mismanagement. You see, the Chief Minister, was an elected person of the people of the province. Okay. The governor is a nominated one. Now, the non-elected person is, in a way, creating hindrance in the process of election. So, the whole constitution is sabotaging. When the constitution has said that when the advice is there, if the governor will act, assent, if not then after 48 hours, or you will send an objection, right? Yes, sir. What kind of interpretation will you do? Sir, for me, it is like the, the, the provincial assembly that was working and that has been dissolved. Or the people mandate assembly, it was abrogated and it was abrogated on the on the will of a non-political person, as already mentioned. But this, there are certain circumstances of the pe people were like they were, they have the mandate in the assembly, but their wishes, their needs were not fulfilled. They were also in the opinion that it must be re-elected. Okay, how do you see the future of social media in politics? Social media is basically four pillar of society. Social media is like a fire. It is a good servant, but a bad master. In politics, social media must have certain domains. We are seeing the free social media that was launched in the 
the start of this century, the Musharraf era. This media has no limits. It has no obligation. It has no certain limits to be followed. It has no code of conduct. To see the social media or its participation in the politics, it must have certain code of conduct. There must be certain conditions. If these conditions are fulfilled, then this role of social media in the politics is good. If these are beyond the certain code of conduct, the role of social media, any form, is it against a conspiracy? Is its role related to the same or its role related to infotainment, both in the form of information, it may be political information, or in the form of entertainment? It must be in the boundaries. If it is in the boundaries, then it is good for politics because it, it both brings the good and bad things of the politicians, of the people, of the assembly and of the that time in which the different decisions are being taken. If it is in the limits, then it is good for politics. If it is not in the limit, it is being used by certain people against the certain people, then it is not good for politics. It must be in the certain limits and it has certain criteria to judge the role of, polit role of social media in the politics. Okay. Now think about China, the governance system, and then you think about India, its governance system. They are for the last 70 plus years, they are on democratic path. China has got a different type of setup. How do you see the sustainability of the future of these two systems? Democracy in China and in India, and if we implement all those models in Pakistan to keep the democracy on the rail, to to keep the dis democratic process working, to keep the political will of the people to be seen in the assemblies and add in, as the representative of the people. Democracy is basically a collective participation and collective participation is always the mandate. It is always the might force. It always wins. It keeps all democracy's basic things, basic uh, root from which accountability, rule of law, transparency, all these branches explode. And if democracy is the root country stable, then it all the our rule of law or all the participatory governance, accountability, and all different tiers of a good governance will flourish. And if it is good in China and India, and if same what is implemented in Pakistan, then we will all see the same fruits. Thank you. Happy you, sir. What are bureaucratic rigmaroles? I couldn't get the term. Red tapeism. Sir, red tapeism is actually the delay tactics. According to my suggestion, it, these are the delaying tactics. And also there are certain hurdles. That is that we are not so up to date in terms of management of or even management of, of our uh, dealings or, or, or the work or, or job description. Red tapeism is basically because of two causes according to me number one is the incapacity of the people that are on that position secondly it is the basically due to the delaying tactics incapacity can be defined also in the terms of the lack of knowledge the lack of experience and the lack of the tenure surety we have certain officers posted in certain department for even less than a week they have to they have to run the business but they have no idea. So that is also the reason for red tapeism in Pakistan. And also certain delaying tactics, it might be of certain critical pressure. It might be of the fear of being accountable for direction. If I, I or someone else has to take the decision that has certain consequences or it may be the matter of policy. And after 10 or 20 years, when anyone has to revisit his decision, it may be called accountable for what he has done. So that is also the reason for red tapism in the bureaucratic, bureaucratic models. Give your career a boost with CSSPMS preparation from civil services preparatory school. Join CSSPMS for on-campus and online classes. Join us for your bright future. Civil Services Preparatory School, Jitan Markaz, Islamabad. Register now at 0316-570-1593. Define diplomacy. Foreign service for Pakistan is your third choice. And diplomacy is basically a relation on certain terms and conditions between two states, between two regions, and in current scenario between the two different countries. For it is based basically on the give and take. 
certain benefits to certain countries which are in relation in the term of diplomatic ties. These are basically based on cultural ties or foreign relations uh, or in terms of the developing, developing nation, the trade deficit, uh, sorry, the trade relations. So this diplomacy is for the give and take reason where one, it is a symbiotic relationship where both can get benefit from each other. Why leading political parties and bar associations, they are uh, openly uh, disputing the fixation of benches by the Supreme Court? For me, it is a blame game actually, because all the political parties and bar associations have their own motives, they have their own agendas to work on it. Uh, so the, the bench fixing that is uh, being highlighted, it may be there, it can, you can, I can say that it is a sort of political blame game to gain the political benefits, to victimize any person or anything. Or sometime in case of our country, it is like all the benefits or all the cases that any political party have faced. They want like it was the a blame game against them. It was defamation of their party or their political motives. So they try to uh, settle it down like. There are a number of judges who are never made part of the benches. There are judges who are repeatedly again and again uh, being made part of the judges. What does that mean? Hmm? Okay, no problem. Uh, you have been a lecturer in HEC department. What has you see, uh, this being a lecture, what has this, how has you benefited from it? I was a lecturer in higher education department. I served in a government qualified women Chikwal for two years. First of all, uh, the two benefits which I get, I came to know about my potential over there. When I was teaching, I was basically teaching chemistry over there to the students of BSc and FSC level. And I came to know about I have more potential. I will I can influence the society in more better form. Secondly, I came to know about a vast variety of subjects being taught in the colleges. I was not aware of the Persian <coughs> subject. I was not aware of the civic and education subject over there. It has broadened my view of knowledge. I was a science student and I even did research in the science. It has gave me an uh, expanded horizon of the all the humanities subjects. Okay, thank you. Arfa Bertul, foreign service is your third preference. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell me the difference between a high commissioner and an ambassador? No, ma'am. Sorry. You've studied physical chemistry. Can you define physical chemistry? It is a branch of chemistry that basically deals with all the physical phenomena of the particles. Basically, particle, we can say electron or all the subatomic particles. All the physical characteristics are the, their behaviors towards the light, their electromagnetic behaviors, their properties that are dealing with their shells, subshell electronic distribution. And it mainly deals with their junctions, their PN junctions and their uh, different composition nature. You have three favorite personalities. Uh, Marie Curie, of course, chemistry. Uh, Nigar Johar. Who is Nigar Johar? Nigar Johar is a lieutenant general and now major general in Pakistan Army. And she is uh, basically a doctor by profession. She also served in during COVID-19 days, boldly served in the face of this uh, pandemic at the Pakistan level. And she's the first woman to be lieutenant general in Army Medical Corps. No, was it not uh, General Shahida? Uh, the four other ladies promoted to the rank of Major General, but she is the first one to be the Lieutenant General. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you have studied chemistry and you are dress designer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is your philosophy of dress designing? Because each designer has his own philosophy for the design. What is yours? Uh, I have two basic. I always go for the one theme, one color choice. That is because I think for me it looks so good to see a person in one monotone rather than different color. Secondly, I believe in the Pakistani traditional dresses. I design dresses for myself, my family, and even I give dresses to my different friends. And I have distinction for mono theme and secondly for Pakistani dresses. 
So you take uh, traditions. I take Pakistani traditions. Pakistani traditions. Um, so different. We are a you know heterogeneous society. Different subcultures exist. So have you ever designed a lacha kurta? No, ma'am. Because that is also a tradition, and it's very I think environmental friendly <laughs> with heat and everything. Um, environmental science is your also optional. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me why Pakistan is one of the top uh, seven climate change vulnerable countries? Welcome to CSP's Academy for CSS PMS preparation. CSS PMS तहरीरी इम्तिहान के तमाम मजामी की ऑनलाइन और ऑन कैंपस तैयारी के साथ साथ सब्जेक्ट सिलेक्शन असाइनमेंट चेकिंग क्लास टेस्ट मॉक एग्जाम इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनका किया जाएगा इसके अलावा एफ पी एस सी की तजवीज करदा बुक्स से बने मैरी नोट और सी एस पी पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन बुक्स मुहैया की जाएंगी रजिस्टर नाउ एट जीरो थ्री वन सिक्स फाइव सेवन जीरो वन फाइव नाइन थ्री पाकिस्तान लाइज इन दैट रीजन इन दर्थ दैट इज मोर वलरेबल टू क्लाइमेट चेंज बिकॉज वी हैव डिफरेंट सीजन and due to difference we have glaciers we have deserts due to we have diverse terrain this diverse terrain we have to manage a lot of thing we have desert at one side we have sea at the other side both the people living over there the habitat over there both is whenever anything changes we get temperature rise even 1 degree that affects our glaciers that affect even our sea that affect our deserts so pakistan suffer drastically from any minor change in the climate that's why pakistan is most vulnerable because its terrain is diverse there are many countries in this terrain why don't they get the same level of uh, inundations and problems secondly pakistan is agricultural country we take most vulnerability because of we affect basically in terms of agriculture whenever flood come whenever drought come we suffer badly in terms of agriculture in terms of habitat destruction So that's why we are most vulnerable. Thank you so much, Alifa. Alifa, uh, can you tell us the administrative hierarchy of your province? Administrative hierarchy uh, for field, for secretariat, like both. Uh, in the secretariat management, we have SOs at B seventy nine, starting from lower to higher section officers. Then we have deputy secretaries. Then we have additional secretaries. Then we have special secretaries. and secretaries for different department and for home department as additional chief secretary home and in the sngd that is additional chief secretary punjab and over there there is a chief secretary of any province chief minister is not part of executive hierarchy he is okay uh, police is your second preference what is the police hierarchy of a province no, i have no idea actually i am not sure it is asps and parallel dsps the promotees then these are sps ssps and then aigs and then igs dpo is a posting or a rank dpo is basically a posting thank you you have studied punjabi uh, you must have noticed while studying sufi uh, punjabi you must have noticed all sufi poets uh, they identify when they are talking in poetic sense they identify as females main neemi mera murshid uchcha you know all males but they are speaking in a female tone why the reason is the females are regarded as the best custodian of love they can inflict love they can even embrace love and they can sacrifice for love so they think that being a female they can better uh, display that they can better describe the virgin of love or they can better explain their feelings being a female because females have more power to retain the love what are five attributes of khudi that iqbal describes self respect uh, the, the self respect and the accountability sense of responsibility towards self and the your responsibility of your actions that are influencing the society education education not in the form of formal education education to be conscious about yourself to be conscious about your surrounding and to, to be conscious about your actions i what 10 duties that mawardi identifies for an amir of an islamic state 
अमीर मस्ट बी अ मुस्लिम अमीर मस्ट बी नॉलेजेबल अमीर मस्ट हैव आइडिया ऑफ इट्स पीपल सफरिंग मस्ट नो द सोसाइटी द सोसाइटी द नीड्स ऑफ सोसाइटी एक्चुअली एंड अमीर मस्ट बी पायस पायस इन द सेंस ऑफ ही मस्ट बी अकाउंटेबल फॉर हिज एक्शंस बिफोर द गॉड बिफोर हिज अपॉइंटी एंड बिफोर द पब्लिक ही मस्ट बी राइटियस राइट इन द सेंस ही एक ही बात होगी ना पायस राइटियस एंड ऑल सर फॉर पायस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में बताए ना ही मस्ट बी ऑनेस्ट ही मस्ट नॉट यूज एनी इल मीन्स मे बी इंटेंशली और मे बी अन इंटेंशली दैट आर रिगार्डेड एज अ गिफ्ट और एनी थिंग दैट आर शोर टू हिम ओके लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज कॉल्ड कंटेम्प्रेरी ऑफ ऑल एजेस हिज पोलिटिकल थेरी इज प्रैक्टिकेबल फॉर मी इट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू सरकमस्टांसिस his uh, famous line in his political theory is a ruler must be as brave as a lion and he must be as cunning as a fox because he must be adaptive to the environment and to his participation in the public discipline okay thank you let's close it let's have informal session you can ask question we will give you our feedback How you will place your self-assessment? करके बताओ एक से दस के स्केल में this half an hour which you have spent with us. Seven. Actually, uh, I was not prepared. I have psychological session. नहीं वो हमने भी यही assess किए हैं. हम देख रहे हैं हमारी और आपकी assessment में कितना फर्क है. So you are good, but तैयारी करो. Update हो जाए. Newspaper को focus करो. 80% परसेंट इसी में से होगा यू हैव टू डिफेंड दिस पेपर जो आप उनको लिख के देगी वेदर इट इज केमिस्ट्री वेदर इट इज इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस एंड वट एवर वट्स एवर यू विल राइट हेयर एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज यूर न्यूज पेपर अभी तैयारी कब है एग्जाम थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च चलो यू हैव गॉट ए मंथ तो अभी ये है कि गुजशत तीन महीने के अखबार निकालो न्यूज के या नॉन वर्ड्स एवर यू लाइक तो उसकी इंटरनेशनल न्यूज नेशनल न्यूज एंड सोशल इशूज उनको जो आइडेंटिफाई कर ले और नोटबुक बनाती हैं आप कोई अपनी yes, इंटरव्यू की इंटरव्यू के लिए नोट्स नहीं लिखने सर आई हैव अ नोटबुक सिंस देखो मेरी बात सुनो फॉर एचडी ये जो है ना नोटबुक ये मैं कह रहा हूं यहां लिखो टॉपिक वाटर क्राइसिस यूक्रेन चाइना पाकिस्तान चाइना इंडिया चाइना यूएस नीचे 1 2 3 4 पॉइंट लिख दो बस ठीक है और उनको आप रिपीट करती रहे रोजाना उठ के उनको रिहर्स वो अपना रिहर्स करे देख लें कि मैंने क्या लिखा हुआ सो वेन एंड यू आर एन इंटरव्यू वहां तो रिटर्न में सोच सोच के लिखती रहे ना बट हेयर यू डोंट हैव दैट चांस तो एटलीस्ट आपके वो चार पांच पॉइंट जो स्टोर में हैं वो आप यू आर इन ए पोजिशन टू टेल यू गेट माई पॉइंट That you you need to to instantly you have to reply. तो बस ये दो सोर्सेज है इनको तो ओवर व्यू करते रहे पढ़ते रहे और उस पर न्यूज पेपर पर कंसनट्रेट करें आप ज्यादा किताबों में नहीं घुसना ओवर व्यू लें चाहिए केमिस्ट्री है पोलिटिकल साइंस गवर्नेंस है पंजाबी एक आध इसका दो चार शेयर याद रखें पूछ सकते हैं और इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस थोड़ा सा उसका ओवर व्यू रिपीट करें बाकी इट इज ऑल राइट टू यूर गुड ठीक है सर आप टैक्स रेट ये तो कोई इतनी बड़ी मुश्किल बात थी टैक्स रेट ये जो जो है आई लेफ्ट इट विद इंटेंशनली आई ड्रॉप दिस क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली व्हाई सर आई हैव नॉट रिवाइज द इकोनॉमी एक्चुअली इन इंस्टेड ऑफ गिविंग अ रॉन्ग आंसर आई फाइंड इट बेटर टू ड्रॉप दिस क्वेश्चन ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम डिप्लोमेसी भी आपने सही डिफाइन नहीं किया इसको जाकर देखें क्या आती है व्हाट इज डिप्लोमेसी फॉरेन सर्विस आपने दी हुई है ना तो ये तो ये आप सब पूछा जा सकता है ठीक है आप कभी कभी ये जो जो कांटेक्ट आई कांटेक्ट लूज करती हैं शुरू में जब आप आई थी आप जो है ये आई कांटेक्ट लूज कर रही थी बाद में बहरहाल कुछ बेहतर हो गया था लेकिन कोशिश करें कि आई कॉन्टेक्ट जो है ना वो आपको लूज नहीं करना चाहिए ठीक है Thank you
Arfa, uh, Batul, you have a good personality. You're confident. You are good in your communication. You said that you have been getting awards in your speeches. So it shows that you're a good orator. But uh, there's some areas that you can improve on. We are here to help you. Uh, as far as your dress is concerned, for a professional interview, a monotone is always good. Yes, and shades of uh, blue, grey, black are preferred because they look more professional. Uh, and the shoes should also be in the same tones. Yes, right? uh, as far as knowledge gap, there is knowledge gap. Yes, you need to practice on that. Uh, whatever you have written here is your advantage. Depends on how well you are prepared about what you have written here. So you don't have to write three personalities because you will not have thorough knowledge on all these three persons. Uh, I would recommend keep one or two and do thorough study on that. Mm -hmm. So that if you are questioned, you can answer the questions. Same goes for books. Refresh your memory about the books. You will have to read it before you have to Because panel has written They can ask you questions on that. Same goes for your optional subjects. Review them. You have a good potential. You are a winning horse. A little bit of focus and a little bit of hard work. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. But most of the things panel has already told you, I would just add on to which the chair told you, uh, ke understand your questions. Sir, you asked India and China, what will their future be? You have applied Pakistan. Apply kar diya. Take a deep breath, relax yourself, understand what is asked. Then, you know, take a second and then respond so that you can respond aptly and properly. Nobody expects you to know everything. Nobody expects you to answer every question. What they expect is that whatever you know, one, you comprehend, two, whatever you know, you know it properly. Bas, itni si baat hai. And uh, make an eye contact. Whenever a question comes with from the panel, any individual from the panel, that question is from the rest of the panel as well. They are also judging your answer on that question. So you have to, you know, uh, maintain an eye contact. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Black. Thank you so much.